You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we have Bruce Chatterley, the CEO and president of Senate. Uh, Senate is a company that develops cloud based software and services used by network operators, application developers, and system integrators for the on demand deployment of Internet of Things networks. We talk a lot about their largest. Um, public carrier grade LoRaWAN deployment they have in the United States. It's very interesting to kind of dive into the, the details there, talk about kind of the benefits of that. We also talk about LoRaWAN in general, how it's become kind of the de facto standard for low power wide area networks worldwide and how it's leading the LP WAN market for massive IoT opportunities. We compare that to MBIoT, LTEM, um, just talk about the biggest contributors and, and successes that we've seen kind of using those technologies. And then we, we talk about the challenges, the ch- challenges in device growth, growth, the, the challenges in, in certifications and getting certifications, as well as selecting the right technologies for your deployment and making sure you're marrying that with the, the ROI, the costs, and, and all the other things that are important to make sure that you have success when you're deploying IoT. But before we get into that, if any of you out there are looking to enter the fast-growing and profitable IoT market but don't know where to start, check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Bruce, to the IoT for All show. Thanks for being here this week. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm very excited about this conversation. Senate has been a company that I've um, been, I've, known about and, and followed and spoke to many people at your company for many years. And it's exciting to have you uh, come here to talk more about what you have going on and, and the overall space in general. So I think it'd be great if you could just tell us a little bit more about you, your background experience, um, and anything you think would be relevant for our audience. Yeah, great. Uh, so I'm uh, Bruce Chatterley. I'm CEO of Senate in uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, I happen to live in Seattle. Um, but uh, uh, you know, with with the, the Zoom world today, it's uh, it's the same as as living in Portsmouth. Um, so, in terms of my background, I've been with the company for a little over four years. Uh, I've been a technology entrepreneur for 22 years. Uh, okay. I've done a number of startups, uh, growth businesses um, and over the last 22 years in both uh, wireless cloud services and um, and uh, hosting and IoT. Um, prior to that, I was a big telecom guy with Ameritech and U.S. West and then big companies. So, um, so Senate is a um, developer of cloud-based software and services for the rapid deployment of IoT uh, networks where they're needed, when they're needed, and at the right cost. So okay. when I started with the company in 2017, what I qu- quickly realized was that the IoT business is not about you know, building networks and they, and they will come. It's, it's really about targeting the networks for unique requirements for both geographic coverage as well as uh, technology propagation. And mm-hmm. the best example of that is, uh, for example, water meters, which often exist in pits on the sides of homes or businesses. You know, there's a significant strength of signal and density of network required for those, and you have to hit a certain specific geography. So that's a great example. So. So really what we did in starting in 2017 was set about the, the, um, the process of, um, of uh, you know, architecting a, a cloud-based platform that allowed people to really design and deploy these networks on demand. Um, in addition to that, we happen to have been building uh, over the number of years, uh, the largest publicly available uh, LoRaWAN network in North America. So we've okay. built our network in over 30 uh, states, covering over 2,000 uh, cities. So that's kind of a general overview of Senate. So tell me a little bit more about the the public LoRaWAN network. So a lot of times that I've spoken to, to guests about LoRa, LoRaWAN deployments, solutions, kind of that are using the um, the connectivity, they talk about it more in a private sense. So tell me a little bit more about public side, kind of how it compares to a private network, as well as the overall benefits and kind of um, value that provides to to the IoT market in general? Yeah, sure. Um, And by the way, on our platform, we support both public and private and hybrid. Um, So and we we figured out a way to 
commingle all those things, and I'll talk about that in a second. So, Great. so in, in terms of a public network, we, we really describe that as a network that's deployed on high towers, that's essentially umbrella coverage in a, in a market area or in a geographic area that's generally available to anyone who wants to drop an IoT device down and, uh, and connect it. So that's about the best description of a public network that I can, uh, that I can give you. Um, a, a private network is uh, often described as bring your own gateway. So someone buys a small gateway and in the lower WAN ecosystem, you know, they can be bought for very, very inexpensive prices, uh, you know, less than $100 in some cases. And you plug it into an outlet inside a building. Uh, you connect that to the Senate platform for uh, both gateway and device management and uh, application data streaming. And you've now got your own, your own network. Um, so what we've done is, is we've given you the ability to, um, you know, essentially combine those two where you could actually, if, you're connect, if your gateway is connected to the Senate network, and you're inside and you're, you're um, you know, using your own gateway and you walk outside and your application continues to require connectivity, you can now seamlessly roam on the, the public network and vice versa. Gotcha. The other thing that we've done is we've realized that um, this country, this, this continent is massive and it's very difficult to, to cover all the nooks and crannies at a reasonable price with reasonable uh, revenue support. So, um, we built a uh, and patented a technology called the LP WAN Virtual Network or LVN. And what this allows is any RAN provider, so any, anyone who wants to become a provider of uh, LoRaWAN connectivity, to deploy a gateway against the Senate uh, cloud platform. And if you allow other Senate customers to connect to that platform, we'll share up to 50% of our revenue from those customers with you mm -hmm. for allowing that connection. And that can be a high tower deployment. It can be a, uh, a building. It can be taking your own private enterprise deployment and opening that up within the building to other applications to be deployed. So, so let me ask you that, how does that compare to kind of what Helium's approach is, which is to have individuals purchase gateways and, and kind of help expand a network that way? Um, Interesting if, you should mention that because uh, we've announced recently a, uh, a network interconnection and partnership with Helium. Okay. So, um, so Senate customers actually can get access not only to the Senate public network, but also mm -hmm. to the Helium uh, network under a product that we call Senate Extended Network Services. Okay. And so um, we are offering access to both the Senate public network and the entire Helium North American network at no additional charge. Uh, mm. for that helium access to our customers. So it's it's covered under the, the Senate uh, charge. So um, the, uh, the, the way that differs is that um, in the LVN, the LPWAN virtual network, we actually ask our customers to rate the, um, the grade of support for their, their gateway deployment. So it can be everything okay. from consumer grade, which is what helium is, where there's no um, service level agreements or expectation for upside, or, uh, sorry, uh, uptime um, to enterprise grade where you have specific metrics for if it goes down, here's my response time for when I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, fix right. it to right. carrier grade, which is obviously carrier grade. Based on how you register your gateway, your revenue sharing will follow that. So it's the least amount of revenue sharing for consumer grade and the highest amount for carrier grade. Um, the Helium network is obviously consumer grade, you know, often sitting in someone's bathroom window, you know, um, you know, may or may not be up. And the way they deal with that is they massively deploy these things. So if one's down, hopefully another one's up. Um, so so that's how it, that's how it, it differs is, you know, the Senate fundamental network is a carrier grade SLA backed network. OK, um, the Senate LVN Gotcha. is governed by the classifications that I talked to you about. And you can opt in only to carrier grade or carrier and enterprise or the whole thing. So, so let me ask you then, when we're thinking about as a connectivity option amongst all the other types of connectivity in the, in the landscape um, for IoT, what is it, what's, what about LoRaWAN has kind of allowed it to become so popular? And on top of that, 
where are you seeing the biggest growth opportunities from a use case or an application perspective? Because obviously each connectivity is better suited for certain applications depending on certain parameters that are required for it to meet an ROI and to be successful. So from from your perspective, you know, where does Lorwin really kind of lead the way and, and what, what use cases is it really designed for in your opinion? Yeah, well, we, we always say that, um, it, you know, for example, when people ask me to compare LoRaWAN to LTEM or MBIOT, you know, what, what I always respond with is that to your point, each one of these technologies has its own strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And it's really not a matter of one or the other. It's a matter of matching the strengths to the requirements of the application and the, right. uh, uh, you know, the connectivity. So, so um, the reason LoRaWAN has become the global standard for LP WAN, low power wide area networking, is because one, it's an open standard. So, so it's a standard first of all. Um, right. Two, it's an open standard, which means anyone sure. can build either networks or devices or applications to the standard and they know what they're they're building to it's consistent um three because it's an open standard we've now achieved from a global standpoint economies of scale in terms of device production and uh, the availability of networks and so now we're starting to see device costs and component costs go down um and it's it's getting very inexpensive to deploy uh, you know, uh, both devices and, and, uh, and connectivity technology, whether you want to bring your own or, or access a public network. Um, right. And the last thing I would say is because it's an open ecosystem, um, the variety of both devices and applications has become virtually unlimited. Uh, sure. uh, not, not just in any one country, but in the globe. And you can source devices from pretty much anywhere in pretty much any niche application and that's growing every day. So um, from a use case standpoint, the lower WAN technology is called LP WAN, or it's called the low power wide area networking, which means that it, it's really targeted end to end to primarily battery powered devices. Okay. So the entire technology is optimized end to end from a protocol and from a communication standpoint to really extend the life of the battery to you know, 15 to 20 years on a, you know, a double A battery. And so um, the use cases that that lends it to are things that are battery, battery powered, obviously. And I'll, I'll give you a good example. Um, one of the uh, most successful segments we have right now is in um, uh, water utility metering, mm. so AMI. Um, so we're building networks uh, literally all over the United States for utilities to, um, to uh, uh, AMI enable their meters. So basically okay. to read their meters over the air and stream that data to uh, a system that allows them to make intelligent decisions, uh, detect leaks and those kinds of things. So right. we have hundreds of thousands of uh, meters under contract and obviously a water meter cannot be powered for obvious right. reasons. So it's battery powered device. These are massive infrastructure projects. So they have 20 year life so the battery has to last for 20 years. And that's what we're getting right. in, here, in that case. Um, another example would be in gas utilities. Um, we've recently announced a, uh, a number of different initiatives in doing uh, leak detection at the meter, uh, as well as automatic shutoff if there's a leak detected. So we have LoRaWAN based uh, shutoff valves, as well as uh, uh, leak detectors that, that can identify leaks. So the utility space is really an exciting space. Um, and then um, uh, another really interesting space would be food safety, where, okay. where uh, uh, application providers are deploying a gateway in a fast food restaurant, for example, and mm -hmm. they're using that to monitor the temperature of both uh, storage areas for food, as well as uh, the temperature of food while it's being prepared. Uh, and using that to also automatically produce things like uh, FDA compliance documents and things like that. Um, so that's another really interesting example. Um, you know, it, it, it's almost limited. Um, you know, there's, uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of another, uh, then the last example would be um, in smart buildings. Mm. Uh, so smart buildings and smart cities is another place where we're getting a lot of different uh, application tra traction. In buildings, it's environmental monitoring to smart water. We have one okay. partner who instruments everything that dispenses water, either in a stadium or in a building. 
as well as monitoring air quality and those kinds of things. So just that's just a, a survey. Uh, sure. you know, yeah, I could great. go on for hours about the different applications that we're implementing on our on our platform. I, I think that's um, kind of more of a testament to just the uh, why LoRaWAN has become so popular and kind of been the de facto when it comes to L, uh, low power wide area network technology. Um, obviously, you have things like MBIOT and LTEM and other technologies that, that are used, but um, for as long as I've been in the space, Laura has been a, a, a leading connectivity um, technology for, for IoT. And it's, I think, all the examples you're giving. And, and if you really understand the difference between those use cases and applications, you can start to see why Laura is such a good fit for so many different applications. So, so I appreciate you kind of shedding light on that. Um, one thing I did want to ask you is, is from your perspective, when we're thinking about... Um, kind of the challenges that exist in the market that may hinder adoption or, or things along that line. What, what are you seeing from your perspective on, on those types of challenges that the market is facing? And you could take this from, from any angle. This could be more specific to, to lower applications, IoT as, in, as a whole, whatever kind of suits you. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the obvious uh, challenge is network coverage for things okay. that require nationwide um, uh, nationwide coverage and, and a good example of that would be asset tracking and logistics where you yep. want to track a truck from the time it, the container gets off the ship to three days inland. Um, right. And so one of the ways we've addressed that is we recently announced a, um, a, a new product in the Senate Extended Network Services, which is Helium was the first. The mm. second is a relationship with a company called Utelsat. Um, okay. The product called EL ELO, uh, which is uh, low uh, low Earth orbit uh, satellites that give us very low cost LoRaWAN connectivity. Interesting. Um, and, okay. and what's interesting about this is that it leverages the existing LoRaWAN device um, hardware, um, and it runs a different set of firmware um that allows it to prefer a terrestrial network while it's going across country for example and yeah. when it needs to communicate and it can't detect a terrestrial network it'll do an uplink via satellite at very low cost oh. uh, higher cost than terrestrial but lower cost than high bandwidth satellite so coverage is, is is one of the big issues that we've solved through a combination of deploying our our uh, our own public networks and the anchor application is often a utility-based application connecting with Helium and now introducing a, a really efficient, low-cost global yep. uh, satellite solution. How about on the device side of things? So when we're thinking about, and we talked about, or you mentioned this earlier, is is there this a lot of what's happened with the growth of LoRaWAN has been enabling organizations to build a multitude of different devices out there. How can companies best evaluate the right hardware and make the correct choices for a specific deployment? Yeah, so at, at Senate, we've been in this business for over nine years. Uh, from the very beginning, um, we are uh, on the, the board of directors of the Laura Alliance, in fact, a founding member. Um, okay. So one of the things we like to think of ourselves on is, is that we are a, a trusted guide. So often companies will come to us and they'll say, I got this business problem I'm trying to solve with Laura Wynn. What should right. I do from a device standpoint? So, so, so that's that's one thing we we would love to help as a trusted guide, and there are probably others. Uh, the Laura Alliance is now doing uh, device certification. That's mm. also a good place to go um, for for help. Um, but but I think that's one of the other challenges that we've had as an industry because it's an open ecosystem um, and it's an open standard. Um, it's kind of, uh, you know, anyone can build a device, but not everyone exactly follows the standard. So right. so one of the ways to solve that is through the Lower Alliance uh, certification program. The other way is uh, we have actually implemented a, um, an interoperability program. So our network conforms to the standard exactly. And um, what, what often happens is device manufacturers will send their device to Senate and we will do uh, testing and then that will go up on the Senate Marketplace, which is on our website, as a Senate uh, certified uh, device. That, that means that we've certified that it's in compliance with our network and the LoRaWAN right. standard. 
So, so it's not an easy thing. Uh, I think uh, what I would advise um, people looking at the deploying applications to do is to go to Senate or which I would prefer, but uh, obviously <laughs> you can go to uh, another source, which would be the Laura Alliance, which would have uh, you sure. know, a good trusted uh, sure. place to, to look at uh, devices. Fantastic. And and I wanted to pull a, a little back uh, or back a little further here for a second before we wrap up and ask, we've talked about the devices, we've talked about the connectivity aspect, but when we're talking about all the different technologies that are involved in an IoT solution, there's obviously risks in choosing the incorrect technologies for a given use case. It doesn't meet ROI, it doesn't work properly, it, you, know, you, you don't see the results you're looking for. There's a, a number of reasons as to, or a number of risks associated with choosing the wrong technologies. From, from your perspective, outside of just uh, the connectivity for a second in the hardware, how are you seeing that kind of addressed in the market? Because it does seem to be a rather difficult thing for companies getting into IoT to really grasp and understand of all the different technologies, all the different pieces of hardware, and how everything plays together. Um, certifications definitely help, um, but obviously there's many other moving pieces. So what kind of advice do you have for companies looking to get started on their IoT journey and selecting everything correctly from the hardware to the connectivity to the, you know, the, the software side and, and beyond? Yeah, as you might imagine, given the breadth of our business, we we uh, deal with that every single day. Um, okay. And and what I would say is, you know, the first the first point I would I would look at is find yourself a trusted source for getting educated around mm -hmm. the benefits and the strengths and the the uh, the value of LoRaWAN. Um, right. You know, our website has a whole section on that. The Laura Alliance is a great place to go. Um, two, I would say find a trusted advisor to help you think through an unbiased trusted advisor to help you think through the different aspects of the fit between the LoRaWAN technology and what you're trying the, the business problem you're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're often described in uh, in the industry as a matchmaker. So okay. we don't do applications, we don't make right. devices, and we don't make gateways. Uh, right. So that puts us in a really good position in the middle to say, here's here's our recommendation, talk to these people, talk to these people. So gotcha. find someone like that that's an unbiased uh, expert that can yep. help you think through the options. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think uh, do some pilots, um, mm. figure it out, you know, and this, the beauty of LoRaWAN is you can densify whenever you need, need to, you can deploy very inexpensive devices to prove a concept and then right. scale it very quickly with outdoor and indoor networks. So, right. so do a pilot, uh, you know, get, get your return on investment model figured out. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I actually was speaking to a guest on a previous episode about the understanding the value you're looking for at a solution before you build to help that pilot stage be more successful as opposed to just launching and then figuring out after the fact it usually leads to some headaches but understanding what problem you're trying to solve what the return looks like for this to be something you would scale and get input in from other people other stakeholders in the company to to move this forward um and things like that but to your point i definitely think finding that unbiased knowledgeable resource that can help put the pieces together um, to help you get off the ground and get something launched is definitely um, the, the fastest way to start seeing the power of of what IoT can actually do for businesses. Yep. Yeah. Um, so last thing I want to ask you, so for our audience out there, obviously we've talked about going to the Senate website. We talked about Laura Alliance. Um, what's on the horizon for for Senate in general and how? what's the best way to kind of stay up to date, the best way to reach out with questions, kind of follow up from, from this conversation today? Yeah, so the best way is to visit our website, uh, www.senetco.com. -E okay. um, that's where you'll find the latest news, the, the latest announcements. Um, you can also find a, a rich set of documents explaining the value of Laura Wan uh, and those kinds of things. Fantastic. Well, well, Bruce, this has been a great conversation. Thanks so much for coming on and talking about this. Um, I... We actually had Donna on from Laura Alliance uh, a couple weeks ago, um, and it's just incredible to see all the things that are going on in, in the LoRaWAN space. And Senate has been, like I mentioned before, a, a very popular name in that space for quite some time. So um, definitely recommend our audience check out everything that's going on over there and stay, stay as up to date as possible. And if they have questions, reach out. So, so thanks again for your time.
Yeah, no problem. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.